Okay, so here we are with a MIDI keyboard, and we have got this connected to Sibelius and the drum kit, particularly in Sibelius, because this MIDI keyboard allows us to enter the drum kit parts quite easily uh, if you keep it in reasonably simple. So, uh, as it is set up at the moment, nothing light lit up here. That's fine, that's right. Uh, what we're going to do is we can hear there's nothing until we get there. Suddenly we start hearing some things. So we're going to move this octave up so that it puts it into the proper range. Now we've got all these things. So we can go and experiment a little. Most of the things we want to find, here's our kick drum on that F, the snare drum on the C. And the hi-hat that we normally need is on the G. So just with those three we can really make a pretty uh, decent drum beat. Le well, we normally have uh, a pretty repetitive, just in Quaver's hi-hat. And most beats that you'll have are going to have a, a kick drum on beat 1, and a snare drum on beat 2, kick drum on 3, snare drum on 4. That's the standard beat and backbeat. Right, there's your basic rock. Uh, we can change that up by moving these pretty much moving these ones around adding them wherever you want to we can add a crash symbol, here's your crash so normally on the first beat we've got toms, toms are normally on the E, the D and the A So we can add some fills now. As you can see, it takes a little bit of coordination to get this right. But once you've practiced it up, I'm sure you'll get, get pretty decent at it. Uh, yeah, let's see how that looks in Sibelius. So here we are in Sibelius. Uh, I'll show you how to set all this up later, but for now, uh, let's just record some drums. Just like we were doing on the keyboard, now we're going to record it into Sibelius. So I'll click on the first bar, press record. As you can hopefully see, this is much easier to put in than writing the notes. Sibelius has put these stems down and those up as they should be. Um, yeah, there are a couple of glitches. That triplet, maybe I didn't, I didn't press that one properly. There are a couple of things, but it's much easier than writing this out. Let me just show you how I would write this out. So I would select crotchet on the numpad, four on the numpad. Then I'd press an F because that's, but that's the wrong F. So I take it down an octave. Uh, then I need the snare drum, that's a C, take that up the octave, then I need another F again, take it down, C up, right, remember all these shortcuts, then I'd have to select that whole bar, make it a second voice, that gives me the first voice on top, then I can choose a G, yeah, okay, there it is, but it's the wrong note head, as you can see, it's, it should be the, the cross note head, so I'm going to use Alt, Shift, and 1 to make it in the proper note head. If I want to put that back, it's Alt, Shift, and 0. Alt, Shift, and 1, and repeat. And that's, now I'm back to where I was with the other one. That took significantly longer. Never mind, if I wanted to do something like this, These rhythms are getting a little bit more hectic. Uh, they're not as easy to just figure out. So the keyboard makes this really intuitive and uh, yeah, just easy to input to the computer. What you'll now quite often find is you want to set up a groove that you can then just edit or add fills into. So I'm gonna make my groove quickly. see that that bar is wrong so I'm going to replace it with those there we go there's my four bar groove 
Now I want to see what my uh, fill would look like. So I'm going to just skip a couple of bars and try out some fills. That's a pretty good fill. So I'm going to take that little section of it and copy it in there. What's that, our last two beats? Let's see how that sounds. Already pretty decent. Then I can probably copy that thing again. Put it over here, over the fill. I don't need that anymore. And I know that if I move this up one, it becomes a crash symbol. I can go and find some different symbols if I want. And I think I've got a pretty good groove building up here. Let's grab my fill again. Maybe I'll just edit that fill for the second time. Let's have, let's make these semi-quavers. Semi-quaver and repeat, and repeat, and repeat. Maybe I'll add the snare drum in there. I just want to play this back and let's hear how it sounds all together. Fantastic. Something that you'll probably find really useful at some point with drum kits is to just slow everything down a bit. That can help you to work the tempos out or work out the, the rhythms. So I'm going to make this 60, make this really, really slow. Now uh, let's try something a little more complex. Okay, the second bar didn't look so good, but the first bar looked pretty good, even though we've got some, some quite different things happening there. Just by slowing it down, I can now go and I can now go and speed this up. Come on, double click. There we go. Take it back to 100 or even 120. Let's see what it sounds like at 120. Just give it a second. Some nice fast metal stuff. There we go. You may find yourself repeating these things, uh, you know, just redoing and redoing to get this right. Like, I don't like that, so I'll redo it. Just stick with it. Give yourself lots of bars and, and go for it. Right, let's show you how to set this whole thing up. Okay, so here's how to set up Sibelius with the keyboard to record or to notate some drums into Sibelius with the keyboard. We're going to, very important, connect the keyboard to the computer first and also your audio interface and switch it on first. Uh, otherwise, you're just confusing Sibelius. So all of that before you start up Sibelius. Then you can start Sibelius and we'll choose a blank score. You, of course, can add your drum kit into whatever score you want. I'm going to make a drum. I'm going to go with set because they call it a set instead of a drum kit. And I'm going to choose the rock kit because I know what those all sound like and I'm comfortable with those sounds. Keep it in 4-4 four, four, and I'm going to add a metronome mark so that I can slow down or speed up as I need to and create. As soon as Sibelius starts up I can get rid of this useless timeline that Sibelius gives me. I'm also going to go into view and untick the hidden objects. Whenever I'm using the keyboard it creates these awful MIDI messages that just annoy me. Then in the play tab is where you're going to do most of your work. I'm also going to get rid of the live tempo and live playback. Sibelius is supposed to be able to follow your tempo but it doesn't really work very well uh, and it can confuse you and confuse the computer so let's just leave them off. Then we're going to make sure that this click is on. Sometimes it'll you'll find it like that, you just click it on. Then we can hear the click that was an interesting little glitch. Uh, so you can hear the click, but it's quite quiet. So what we're going to probably do is press M for mixer 
take that click up and bring the drums a little bit down. Sometimes when we're recording drums, we drown out the sound of the click track with the drums, and then you go out of time. If you're going out of time, that's probably the reason, because you can't hear the click track. And now we should be able to record.